Almighty God, grant us the courage of Jesus Christ, your Son, to face the coronavirus pandemic with trust, strength, compassion, and resiliency. Give us the grace of the Holy Spirit to free us from fear and anxiety so we may do actions of help and support and look forward to our healing with hope. We pray for the health workers, food liners, maintenance cleaners, logistics abler, government leaders, and volunteers who continuously come together to deliver our daily needs to survive. Guide us from this time of crisis, preserve us in peace, protect the weak and vulnerable, and those who serve to society during this pandemic. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name, our Savior. Amen. Nagahatid saya sa mga Pinoy, mga kantang tatak Pinoy. Kahit nasan ka man, kami ay mapapakinggan. Streaming worldwide, the future of radio in Manila, California, and Hong Kong. This is V81 Radio. Malayo ka man sa iyong pamilya, dito ay hindi ka nag-iisa. Iyak ito'y iyong hahanap-hanapin Dahil ito ang nagpapasaya sa atin and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the program anchors and producers and do not necessarily reflect the policies and position of this station. We now bring you the program that brings together leading personalities, representative insights, all together in a meaningful and delightful conversation as your social barometer. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Hosted by breakthrough millennial boomer Gracie Venezuela. Only here on V81 Radio.
Hello and welcome to all our viewers in the Philippines, in the U.S., in the Middle East, Australia, and in the rest of the Asia-Pacific region. Hi, this is Tita Gracie, your anchor, and this is the fifth episode of Let's Chat with Tita Gracie. Now today, we are going to be discussing a very interesting topic. It's about the Cultural Center of the Philippines, an institution that's very close to my heart and close to the hearts of everyone in the arts and culture sector here in the Philippines. And, um, you know, CCP turned 50 years old last year. That's in September of 2019. CCP began a year-long celebration of its 50th anniversary. I had the privilege of being part of the 40th anniversary. And based on my experience, it's one entire year of productions and exciting events that the CCP stages together with its production companies, its in-house production companies. And those production companies would include Tanghalang Pilipino, the Bayanihan, uh, Philippine Philharmonic Orchestra, Tanghalang Pilipino, and uh, the other uh, dance companies and production companies that are housed within CCP. And today, to give us an update on the developments is none other than the Vice President and Artistic Director of the Cultural Center of the Philippines. It is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Chris Miliado. Pagbati sa nice. lahat. Uh, good, uh, good evening, there. good afternoon, hello. Yeah, pagbati sa lahat. Hello, Chris. And good afternoon. Oh, kamusta, Chris? Kamusta, Gracie? Oh, dito ako si Tita Gracie. And uh, uh, Ito, that's my brand. Nag, uh, tayo. Oo nga eh. Uh, and of course, because new normal na tayo ngayon, Chris, uh, I'm broadcasting from my living room. And this is already the fifth episode of Let's Chat with Tita Gracie. And so far, so good. <laughs> and how have you been coping with uh, this whole pandemic situation, Chris? Uh, okay naman. Uh, uh, for almost uh, two, more than two months now, we've been working at home. Uh, yes. CCP has been closed since uh, March. Diniklara uh, yung ng government natin, yung ECQ na tinatawag. So, so uh, as a government agency, uh, sumunod tayo dun sa ECQ at hanggang ngayon sarado pa rin yung CCP except for a skeletal force which maintains the building and the complex. You know, uh, Chris, Alam naman ng mga tao na ang CCP um ng yes. mga production and then all of a sudden in March everything all the venues were closed uh and on ghost light mode walang nangyayari so I'm sure that uh, you in the management of CCP uh, had to adapt no and you know given that it happened right in the middle of your 50th anniversary Tama. Um, this year was supposed to be the second half of the celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Cultural Center of the Philippines. Marami sanang nakahanda tayong magagandang mga programa at mga palabas uh, to celebrate and to finally cap the 50th anniversary celebration. At uh, hindi lang si Siping na apekto ang Tita Gracie, no? pati yung iba nating mga kasama sa ibang oh, theater wow. groups. There were a lot of theater productions, big musicals, that nagtitek nag tinatawag na nasa final dress tech na sila and they never saw opening night they never open and so medyo malungkot at syempre nandoon din yung mga marami nating kasamahan na a lot of these as you know are freelance artists na naapektuhan talaga dahil wala na yung mga palabas wala na yung mga scheduled events at marami pang iba so si si uh we decided to uh, suspend all of our activities till end of the year so wow. you can imagine the impact of this whole thing sa uh, CCP. CCP does at least 800 shows a year. And uh, we employ at least uh, more than 5,000 artists and cultural workers. So a lot of uh, these jobs are going to be affected, as well as audiences who would have wanted, who might have uh, patronized our show. I remember, uh, oh, we expect about 100 thousand to a military to the center a year. So all of this uh, will be affected for sure. Oh, pero I, I know how resilient the CCP 
has been. It has um, uh, experienced seven presidents uh, from 1969 to the year 2020. It has experienced um, martial law, the people power revolution, two more people power revolutions. It has experienced the transition from the last century to this century. And then, of course, ang malungkot niyan, itong pandemic, because madami na wala ng trabaho, walang productions. But I'm sure with the creativity and the energy and the dynamism of you guys in CCP, I'm sure you've already devised something to shift gears a little bit and to go with the flow and yeah. go with the time of the pandemic. And I'm excited to hear that. <laughs> Magandang pakinggan yung pagiging resilient. Pero uh, we have to really acknowledge that this uh, situation is unprecedented. Yes. Uh, this has, uh, this situation is unprecedented, no? Uh, and uh, this has never happened before, I guess, in the history. And the whole world shares this whole traumatic experience, no? And I think this is also what keeps us going. Dahil alam natin na hindi lang naman tayo ang tinamaan ito, kundi yung buong mundo. So we are now trying to all keep our courage up and all our hopes up by communicating and reaching out to uh, other centers all over the world and other artists and communities internationally and see how they're responding to their own situation. At nakakatuwa nga, nakikita natin ngayon, na yung artists are everywhere, especially in social media. Uh, yes. They're performing out in living rooms, in their kitchens, they're fundraising, they're even making uh, PPEs, and even like going out there and delivering to volunteers and the frontliners. So we could see that there's a very high level of uh, volunteerism, especially among the artists True. and culture communities. True. And in fact, uh, nakikita natin yan, ano, yung trend na yan. Everybody's into virtual performances. Like you said, out of their living rooms, out in their balconies, and a special production that are being conducted, like the uh, the concert that uh, uh, Andrea Bocelli did in a very empty uh, cathedral in Milan, and it was so touching to see him, you know, just solo performance lang siya, but it it gripped the hearts of everyone in the world when he sang Amazing Grace, and of course um, there's a new normal, there's a new trend now that uh, luckily this pandemic happened during the time when the digital age is with us and we're all with our laptops, mobile devices, and the internet. And it is, uh, you know, now the avenue of expression. Hello, Chris, are you there? Tama, at ngayon, yes, hi. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Tama yung sinasabi mo. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, tama yung sinasabi mo. Yung, yung platforms natin ngayon, hindi lang para sa mga talagang trained artists, kundi mas kisino na pwedeng humawak ng camera, pwede, at sinong gustong magpakita ng TikTok o ano man, eh, pwede nang maging artista. At ng And natin alam na, mo, ikaw, I saw your first ever recording. Umagang kay ganda. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah. now uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, would, I, would, I would give it to our group of artists. <laughs> yeah, I would give it to their first. Uh, that was an initiative, no, of a group of artists to uh, to sort of uh, boost the morale of our frontliners no, by singing "Umagang Kay Ganda," True. which is uh, which is a very innovative one of those early reaching out to our frontliners. Yes. Yes. So, you know, actually, um, now, because people are, the media consumption habits of our audience has shifted largely to digital. Because mainstream uh -oh. television has a very limited uh, audience uh, growth now. In fact, everybody's migrating to digital. All demographics are migrating to digital. So it's a natural shift. So what mean what that means is that as performers, as artists, as communicators, we now have to study that avenue very closely because it impacts not just our performances, but our marketing initiatives, our business initiatives, and of course, the future landscape, 
where we're heading post pandemic, right? Tama. Uh, but at the same time, hindi natin pinapakawalan yung uh, specific characteristic ng ating arts no, na live. Ibig sabihin yun, talagang kakaiba yung ating tinatawag na live performing arts. Kakaiba yung uh, papasok ka sa isang theater, kasama mo yung napakaraming tao, nakipag-chismisan ka muna sa lobby, you enter, the lights darken, the, uh, the curtains rise, and you could feel the collective excitement of everyone uh, about anticipating uh, the first uh, hints of music, the first burst of color on the stage, iba eh. No? And then, iba, iba talaga yung gala ng live performance. Hindi pa rin natin pinapakawala yan. We are still hoping, and of course, definitely that they will come, that we will go back to our theaters with a vengeance. No? But uh, habang hindi pa pwede yun, uh, ayaw naman natin pakawalan yung connection natin with their audiences. Because then, we know they're out there, they're in their homes, and they're still wanting to connect with the arts, no? to, to connect with their souls through song, yeah. through music, through dance. Of course. Nothing will replace the the presence, your presence in the theater. Uh, and oh. I, yes, I myself am, have experienced the healing of uh, the healing wonders of arts and also the, the the kind of feeling that you know you you have when you enter the theater and you become riveted to the stage and it's magic your your mind gets transported to you know to another place and time and mm -hmm. uh, i'm i'm i got hooked many years ago when i was much younger but you know what i think what's important is we are now going to give the audiences, especially those with very little exposure or no exposure to, to the theater, because now CCP is going to outreach to them via digital. So the goodwill, the bridging that's going to happen within the, that started already and will continue until this pandemic is on will be uh, a strategic uh, of strategic importance to CCP. Um, uh, well, happily, uh, we were really about to, uh, we were preparing ourselves to launch uh, CCP online as part of the September celebrations. But the uh, schedule was, it was September pa of this year. So we've been preparing for this project uh, for more than three years now, uh, practically like lining up the different uh, content, the different uh, kinds of material that we wanted to share online. In a paaga. Dahil nga dito sa, yes. <laughs> sa quarantine, sabi natin nagkaroon ng parang uh, there was a demand no, for for online content and nakita namin na ang dami-daming nag upload Actually, nanggaling din sa audiences natin, you know, communicated who reached out to social media and said, CCP, pwede pang ma, ano, mapalabas niyo ulit yung mga uh, old uh, content niyo and mga baka this is the time that we, you know, we could continue to connect with CCP. And we heard that and we take, took heed of that. So, so we went into the decision, sabi, ko, sabi namin, why don't we we release it earlier? And ito oh, na nga po, uh, nagkaroon na, na, na tayo CCP online program, uh, which is uh, uh, where we can not, not only see archival recordings, you see HD recordings, we see what we call, parang uh, we plan to do rollout then live. Uh, yes. record live uh, interactions with audiences yeah. and, and as well as workshops and even like uh, exhibits so um, wow. hopefully no we're, we're we're trying to get on back into speed in terms of learning the technology dahil of course lahat tayo bago lahat dito yes. pero uh, alam mo ang kinis nating mga pinoy na ano oh, ha yes. na sumakay sa oh. we're, yes, we're what we call very uh, early Adapters. Early adapters. We're early adapters, yes. and uh, we're early adapters. And sa totoo lang, uh, everybody has a gadget. Everybody is reachable via digital, if not a laptop, a mobile device, and the TVs now are connected to internet, smart TV. So, sigurado ako na talagang mas madami pang maaabot tayo ng mga audience ng CCP, hindi lang sa Metro Manila, pati sa mga Karatig Puok, mga Probinsya, Visayas at Mindanao. At sa mga taga-ibang bansa, lalong-lalo na ang ating mga minamahal na kababayan na nasa Amerika, nasa Middle East, mga OFW, nasabik, 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 makadinig ng 
makapagpanood ng play, makapagpanood ng uh, cinema, ng mga movies, at mga ibang produk production ng CCP. So friends out there, we're gonna go on a quick break. But when we return, you will get to know more about what CCP is and how CCP at 50 is making arts matter. <music> 